in this uh, little weblet, we're going to look at the Windows Server Core environment and some of the basic configuration you're going to need to do. Um, obviously, with Server Core, we don't really have a graphical environment to use. Um, it's command line driven, and for most of the configuration, we're going to want to use remote management. So, using the MMC snap ins on another Vista or 2008 server and remotely manage our core installation but you can still perform local configuration so we're going to look at that now so this is a brand new install um, I selected the server call option during installation and it's just finished booting so I'm going to control alt delete this is running in a hyper v and log on as administrator and initially we have a blank password click ok makes us set a new password so so far this looks like a normal Windows installation so far so good um, this is pretty much where the similarity ends at this point it's preparing for the first ever logon setting up the desktop which is actually surprising it takes this long um, we actually see the desktop we get but obviously the profile etc is all still processing for the first time ok so we finally actually logged on and as we can see we just get a command prompt window now if you wanted to change your password in the future um, we still have control delete will still bring up the security menu or you can use the net user command so net user administrator name of the account and then star will prompt you to set a new password um, so what are the first things generally we want to do? So if we were running a normal Server 2008 installation, it would bring up the initial configuration task dialog and we could set the computer name, um, set static IP information, and add features, roles, automatic update, etc. So we're just going to walk through some of those. So currently we've got an auto-generated host name. So we're going to use the net dom command and to avoid typing in that name we can use the environment variable computer name and give it a new name. So I'm going to call this one savdal core 02. Do I want to proceed with the rename? Sure. So at this point we need to reboot. So down here can access the menu to restart so the boss is going to restart and everything else and for the beauty of editing this uh, reboot will complete instantly okay so we're back so we can log on again much quicker this time because the session's already been created we're really just using the existing profile now so there would actually be other things we would typically perform at this point but <laughs> I'm actually going to reboot again because I want to install a patch and the patch I want to install is the Hyper-V update the client because as you see right now I have no mouse from running this in the Hyper-V um, but it's still a good way to understand how we would manually install patches from the command line effectively so we're actually going to just install a Microsoft update so I've inserted a CD with the patches and this is a 64-bit machine so to install we use a WSA command and I want that so this is the standalone installer for Windows updates so I've got the MSU file I just want to install it it's going to check what's on the box and then prompt me do I wish to install the update um, to which I'm going to say yes and it installs as normal 
So typically you would have downloaded the MSU. This is just an easy way to do it. Um, you can add the slash quiet switch if you don't want to see these dialogues and the update will just install effectively in the background with no prompting required. So I'm going to let this patch install and again you would do this same process for any patch you have in the environment. Uh, any MSU you just install with this command WUSA. And then again I'm going to let it do the reboot And again, editing, it's going to complete instantly and we're back. Okay, so we're back, so we're going to log on. And now we've got the Hyper-V update installed. I actually have a mouse I can click and do things with. Uh, I'm actually remote desktop into the Hyper-V server and then running the console of the virtual machine which is why the mouse won't work by default. Um, the Hyper-V update basically fixes that interaction. So at this point I've renamed the computer, I've installed an update. If I go and run hostname, I'm now running my new name. Now, if you were doing this on a domain controller that was a server core, you shouldn't just use the rename. Renaming a domain controller, you should use the NetDOM uh, computer name and add a new name. So you'd actually do the slash add command and then make this new name the primary name with the slash make primary um, parameter. Reboot the computer and then remove the old name with the slash remove command. So what else do we typically want to do? Well, IP configuration. So if I look at my IP right now, it's dynamically assigned. So I want to enumerate the IPv4 interfaces. And effectively, it's index number two, as you can see here, that's my physical connection. So I'm going to give it an IP address of 192.168.1.120 so netshell interface ipv4 set address so the index so the index is 2 statically assigned subnet mask and the gateway without typing the end. Done. Uh, put them on a DNS server. So Again, we're adding it to that adapter. So we can have multiple DNS servers. The primary, the first DNS server has an index of one. I can add a second DNS server. I'll give it an index of two. I can add Win servers exactly the same way. I've replaced the word DNS server with Win server, and that's all you need to do. Do an IP config all now. You can actually see my IP address, uh, the gateway, subnet mask, and the DNS servers I configured. So I now have IP, static IP configured and complete. So time zone. We actually do have a couple of graphical tools. One of them is datetime.cpl. This is why I wanted the mouse. So currently I'm set to Pacific time. If I click, click change time zone, I jump up central time, and I'm done. So like I say, we do get uh, time date CPL, 